Let's just imagine now that this is a brand new carburettor and it's fitted to a brand new machine and we've just put fuel in the fuel tank for the first time so it's never had any fuel go through this carb at all. So really what we've got in there then is just air. And in order to see things a little clearer, we'll zoom in on this point here. OK, that's a little clearer. So let's imagine the end here of the primer bulb is pressed upward towards the carb. OK, now air is forced up through the centre and down out through the return. Now let's let go of the primer bulb and allow it to spring back to its original position. A vacuum is created inside there. This one-way valve now, because of that vacuum, has closed shut. Because that primer bulb can't suck the air back in basically there, it draws in air underneath the valve flap. So that air is now coming into the primer bulb, creating a vacuum behind it. Air wants to leave this metering area here in order to go down into the primer bulb. And that, of course, is creating the vacuum inside of here. Now let's just take a quick look inside of here. This here, shown in brown, is the metering gasket and below it here, shown in green, is the metering diaphragm. And it's these two that are vital at this point. And that's because the metering gasket creates a perfect seal allowing that vital vacuum that we need that will become apparent very soon. And it also compartmentalizes that vacuum in order for the metering system to work correctly, as we'll see shortly. And the metering diaphragm is used by that vacuum in order to operate the metering system. And let's take a look how. Well, as we can see by those blue arrows there, we've got air leaving the metering system and that's building up that vacuum. It draws the metering diaphragm upwards, upwards towards the center there, center of the metering system. And that's because it's made of a special material that allows the center of it there to move up and down accordingly as and when there's vacuum up there. When the metering diaphragm is in its expanded state like this, this area of the metering diaphragm, which is a metal area, like a little dowel area, which is part of the diaphragm, contacts the back of the metering lever. This forces the back of the metering lever downwards. This allows the metering lever to pivot on its pivot point here and overcome the pressure of the metering spring, whose job it is to keep the metering lever upwards. That pivot in action lifts the front end of the metering lever and connected to the metering lever is the metering needle. So the metering needle now moves with the metering lever and it's moved that needle backwards off its airtight seal. The tip of the metering needle is generally made of like an hardened rubber and when it contacts its seat in its normal position, it creates that airtight seal. But because we've overcome that metering spring, and allowed the lever to tilt backwards and lift the front up, it's now opened that seal. And that vacuum pressure from below freely draws down the air from above here, down past that open seal and down alongside the metering needle inside this special tube that the metering needle operates through. So we've got suction pressure coming down this pipe here. It's all the same tube and it's felt right back to this point. So air has drawn down this tube here and that vacuum there is felt beneath here and then all of that vacuum can be felt all the way up this fuel tube so it sucks upwards. A result of all that vacuum pressure means that we're going to draw some fuel up into this pipe from the fuel tank. And that completes one push of the primer bulb and now we're going to push it again. So let's now release and let the bulb expand back to its original state. Primer bulb's expanding and so it's creating the vacuum back along these pipes in the metering system. It's that air leaving the metering system that's drawing up on this diaphragm here, keeping the lever at the back pushed down and of course pushed up at the front as a result and opening the gap there allowing the fuel in, which will then quickly be drawn this way in following the air leaving this area. We've got fuel now all inside this metering system here. So what we're doing now when we push the primer bulb and release it we're just having fuel cycling through from the inlet side of the fuel tank and out to the return so we could say now that this carburetor is considered primed so let's see now how that all fits in with the bigger picture of how the carburetor works as a whole
We've got it all nice and primed up there, ready to start. So let's imagine then that this carburetor is fixed to a machine and we've just primed it up and we're going to try and start the machine. And let's now imagine that the operator has pulled the starter pull cord. And so the engine started turning over. It's now cranking and that's drawing in air through here, through the inlet. So that's got the ball rolling. And we can see there that the air is traveling through there nicely towards the engine. And because the throttle's wide open and this plunger is nicely off its seat, the air rushing in towards the engine is drawing here. It's drawing air out of the pipe here and drawing it from down below. So what it's doing is it's creating a vacuum and that vacuum is drawing on this fuel here down below. And that vacuum overcomes that special valve and allows fuel to flow upwards through the main jet here, through this pipe. And it's released here out into the Venturi where the air takes it through into the engine for combustion. So the Venturi has now began receiving a supply of fuel from the metering area here. So as the air rushing through the Venturi continues to draw out that fuel there from the main jet, it has an effect down here in the metering system. Because it's supplying the Venturi with fuel, it's creating a vacuum down here. And that, of course, affects the metering diaphragm. It, of course, draws the metering diaphragm upwards. And if we take a look at that a little closer, we can see there now that the diaphragm has been drawn upwards and that's had an effect on the back of the lever there, on the back of the metering lever, of course. And again, that lever is tilted here and the vacuum strength of all that fuel leaving into the Venturi has overcome the power of this spring here and it's tilted forward at the front here. And that's opened the tip of the needle valve again and it's created a vacuum in this upper chamber here, lifting that valve flap here off its seat. And of course, then it draws fuel in from the system and then all that fuel then travels down past the needle valve here and into the metering area where it can be taken up the main jet here, making it available for the Venturi there for the inlet of the carburetor. And now there's a constant supply of fuel coming through the carburetor, providing the engines running and the throttles open, then the through road of fuel will just continue this way now as it is right around the system and up through the main jet and into the Venturi.